it may be a dark and drizzly day here in the Bay Area, but it's actually a momentously a fantastic day because for the first time in a long time, we've got some new single track, bike legal advanced trails. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have been mountain biking in the Bay Area for 15 years and I really this is that rocky section. don't think we've had a single advanced trail built Whoa! in that entire time. But today is a momentous day. There is new bike legal single track for now. If you can keep it <laughs> in Martinez, California, Briones Regional Park. Wow, awesome. Small step down. Yeah. Woo. Bigger step down. Yeah. Woo. A little dark and drizzly, but kind of perfect right now. A little brake bumpy. Woo. That was awesome. <laughs> A little rocky bit sneaks yeah. up on you, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if you like, Drop, you know, a couple <laughs> drops on Yeah, it. exactly. This is the Briones Pilot Project by the East Bay Regional Parks District in Northern California. It's a two-year program that switches illegal trails into legal trails and sees what will result from that. Almost every public park has some kind of mandate to serve the user groups of their parks and to figure out what's going on, what's popular, what's not popular, what's in demand. And for years and years and decades now, the mountain biker user group has almost been completely ignored by the East Bay Regional Parks District. A year ago, if you were caught riding any of the trails in this video by a park ranger, you would get a ticket. On the surface, this sounds like the civil disobedience dream. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We finally got this all figured out, but it's still illegal for you to be out on these trails with a shovel. So there's no fixing up of these trails going on right now, but there's much, much more riding of these trails going on right now. So is it all just gonna fall apart? Are these trails just gonna get destroyed and no one can fix them? We'll see. Back up to the top with the help of a little <laughs> e-bikeage, a little tow rope today. This is Joel Schrock riding ahead of me, showing me the pilot program zone. He's one of the main moderators of the Bay Area Mountain Bikers Facebook page that has more than 11,000 people in it. That last trail we did was called Isaacs. This one's called Texas Toast, AKA B4. Yeah. I have ridden all these trails at some point throughout the years, and these trails have been here for years. I just try my best not to put illegal trails on video. Do my best to whoa, have good relations with land managers and trail builders and all that stuff. Whoa, overgrown, rocky. <laughs> Rocky road. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> Spicy. I almost got bounced out. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. 15 years. We haven't had very many wins in the Bay Area. Ponte Ridge in Marin County, Moore Creek Park in Napa. Whoa, yeah. Talking about new single track, purpose-built mountain bike single track, it's Crockett Hills, just not much in 15 years. And even more, that's just how long I've been mountain biking. And definitely nothing this advanced. Oh, yeah. 
Vernon. People were worried that they're gonna sanitize the trail. That bridge is the only change that I noticed. Yeah, nice. Rejoining society here. <laughs> and now there we go. Welcome hellacious, to our next climb. Hellacious climb out. <laughs> yeah, so this one's a grind. Big time. Oh yeah. All right. Whew. 172, getting towed up. Right? That's crazy. <laughs> Heart rate. Even with an e-bike tow on a dark, drizzly day, I was dying on these climbs. I had to make sure I kept chug-a-lugging on the best sports drink in the business. Today's fine sponsor, Element. Summer is on the way and you need to get your hydration sorted out before you get into those hot days and long miles in the saddle. The only thing I put in my bottle these days is Element. It's stevia sweetened, zero sugar, tastes fantastic, and it's extra salty to help you beat the cramps, the headaches, and the general tiredness that comes along with a lack of electrolytes. The Element Thesis is out with sugar and in with salt. They believe that most people, especially active people who get out and sweat a lot, need more salt in their diet to perform and feel their best. I have tried them all at this point and Element is the sports drink for me. It tastes great, it keeps me fired up, it doesn't make me all twitchy, it doesn't mess with my stomach, and it doesn't have a half pound of sugar. The Element mission is to restore health through hydration. I think it's best done through the raspberry flavor, but you might like something else. And right now, Element's offering a free sample pack. When you make any order on the website, you'll get eight single serving packets so you can figure out which flavor you like the most. The sample pack deal is only available through my direct link. So head on over to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T.com slash B-K-X-C and give it a try today. So now we're getting on the bench trail. Bike feels a little different without the old toe. <laughs> I don't right? I didn't think you were doing much, but you were doing plenty. So this is the bench trail. And right now you gotta kinda, on weekends you gotta look at the pilot program map or the calendar thing. Odd days, mountain bikers are allowed. Weekdays, everybody's allowed. Even though that sign said bikes and <laughs> hikers only, but I believe equestrians are allowed too. But all the downhill trails have a sign that say bikes only. Plenty of poison oak to go around. Oh yeah. <laughs> Down on uh, Texas toast, it's like almost don't touch anything green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A little flow. <laughs> Everything so far been straight up, straight down little groove. Mountain bikers as a user group, I think we do a lot of complaining, but how much time have we spent actually doing advocacy, writing letters, showing up at meetings? It's just a lot of, a lot of whining, not a lot of taking action. Awesome. Thank you. Here's an example of one of the trails I closed. Yes. And why? It's straight down the fall line and there's no way for water to run off of it. And so basically once water starts going down it, it just channels down and it'll just eventually make a gigantic rut and it's not, it's not sustainable. So after all the meetings and all the emails, how did it feel to actually get like a pr approval for this whole thing? Oh my gosh, dude, it was so amazing just to see it all happening, right? And to come out here like the first ride, I sent you a photo where I'm like standing next to the sign. I just couldn't believe it, right? I mean, a downhill, bike only directional trail people didn't think was ever going to happen in the bay area yeah. and to have it happen within the east bay regional parks which has always been so restrictive yeah you know it really blew people's minds and that was why it was hard to get people to show up to the meetings right it's because they're never going to do anything anyways exactly people would sh you know and before the pandemic you'd actually have to go and show up and sit there for three hours in order to comment that the pandemic came and then they did their meetings remote 
and then it allowed people to actually like zoom in and if you're making a comment that wasn't actually on a specific agenda item you could talk to them in the first 15 minutes bounce out get back to yeah. your day but you know it allowed people to actually express what they were feeling and, and be heard and this isn't all you know celebration from every angle there are people who went out here and built these trails illegally and would probably like them to stay illegal and probably don't want anyone riding on their trails that they built and they spent hundreds if not thousands of hours on over the past who knows 20 years or so but man the east bay parks district has bulldozed this next trail hank and frank previously one time came through bulldozed the whole thing and then everybody just got back together and dug the trail and rebuilt it better than ever so I see that side of the story that now all of a sudden everybody's going to be able to, you know, use the fruits of a fused labor. Yeah, it's very interesting, the different constituents of people. There's, you know, maybe people who are indifferent. Then there's people who would like all public lands to be locked up. <laughs> and then there's people like me that would love to just have more trails, more people out enjoying nature because we're all pretty much fat, sick, and obese. And this is the miracle cure for all of that. Woo and then there's people who built the trails that maybe don't want everybody else out on their thing. Whoa. Yeah. And I think the people who build trails wouldn't uh, mind so much if everybody was out here fixing stuff up all the time. Yeah. Just a couple hours a month would be miraculous. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Whoa -ho -ho. No creek gap today. <laughs> Ooh. Man, there's a lot of offshoots. <laughs> Woo yeah. That was a nice step up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My vision got too shaky to take that on. <laughs> Couldn't tell what was happening. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and I have to get my other uh, big time political belief here. If you allow cows in your parkland, you have no moral high ground <laughs> to not allow mountain bikers to build trails. Yeah, cows go everywhere. They destroy everything and to not be allow mountain bike trails is just completely ridiculous. Good time, awesome. <laughs> And there is one more trail out there called Curl of the Burl, but it's a little overgrown at the moment, so we're gonna avoid it today. Yeah, they're trying to get a big mower out here, a swath mower. It was uh, on loan from Crockett Hills, and it had to get back out there because Crockett was just amazingly overgrown. Yeah. Uh, it was like not rideable, but uh, hopefully it'll come back. And uh, Patrick Demons, who's been doing a lot of work out here, is hoping to get back to work and uh, awesome. get that mowed down. These are our public lands, but it never feels like it when you're a mountain biker. We technically own these lands, we pay for these lands, but the constraints and rules and regulations in the San Francisco Bay Area grind all progress to a halt. But just like everything else in this world, when there is a huge demand for something, the supply will magically appear. Well, we know it's not magical. We know that it's always a small group of dedicated outlaws that take the trails into their own hands, create amazing experiences, and as we've seen with almost every world-class mountain bike destination, the land managers eventually throw in the towel and approve the trails and make them legal. And all of these wonderful trails that we love are created under the cloak of darkness, under the threat of being fined or maybe even imprisoned, and as we probably know, the rogue trail builder is not a very political person. They just want to go out, build trails, ride trails, have fun. 
So it takes political people to do the advocating, to move the process forward, to find compromises, and eventually get what we mountain bikers want, more single track trails for our use. In this case, it was the Bicycle Trails Council of the East Bay that worked with the Parks District and had meeting after meeting, work group after work group, and just little by little by little, we came to the pilot program. Big shout out to Scott Bartlebaugh and Austin McInerney for being the boots on the ground with this project for more than two years, just pushing it forward little by little. The time, the effort, the energy is very much appreciated. And now there's talks of other pilot programs in the East Bay, which would be really, really cool. It feels like we're actually moving forward, finally. I heard a quote just yesterday that said, science only progresses one funeral at a time. And sometimes that's how it feels with mountain bike land management. It doesn't have to be this way. Get involved wherever you are. It doesn't have to be the San Francisco Bay Area. Wherever you are, look up your local mountain bike club, get involved, join a meeting, see if it's right for you. That time and effort and energy is put to you so much better than money. A lot of these mountain bike trail advocacy groups have tons and tons of money just sitting in the bank doing nothing. They need people actually progressing and advocating and politicking. I'm sure within the next 50 years, we will get a couple more trails built for mountain bikers. I can't wait. But until then, go ride something new, maybe outside of the San Francisco Bay Area, and maybe I'll see you on the trail. <laughs>